This is a short video to talk about what the closure of a set is in a topological space. And so in the previous video, we talked about what it meant for a set to be closed. Uh, a set in a topological space is closed if its complement is open. You could say that the other way too, where the complement of an open set is closed. Um, but now we're gonna talk about is the closure of a given set. And so your definition here, you know, given, you know, A, that's a subset of X, where again, X has got a topology on it, say, um, the sets, or maybe I'll say it this way, the closure of A is denoted, and this, what we're gonna do anyway, is A bar, um, and uh, what is it? It is the intersection of all the closed sets that contain A. So the intersection of all closed sets that contain A. All right, so another way to say that is that A bar is the smallest closed set containing A. And I'm gonna draw you some pictures. Um, some things to glean from that definition that are maybe easy to gloss over. Remember that uh, the intersection of any number of closed sets is still closed. So how did we define the closure then? What are we doing? We're taking the intersection of all closed sets. So that guarantees you that a closure itself is a closed set. And so if you think about uh, the intersection there, um, if I'm gonna take the overlap of all possible closed sets that contain A, that overlap should be the smallest such set that contains A. And so that overlap is what A bar is. Let me give you a little bit more uh, intuitive examples here. So for example, X is a real line, usual topology. Um, I've got, let's say, A, B. And this is my set here, this is my A, say. Then A bar would be, what is the smallest closed set that contains that? You should just put brackets on there. You should just include A and B. And it's that easy. And so for this case anyway, so A bar here, then A, B is equal to A bar in that case. So what am I looking for again? What is the smallest closed set that contains this orange interval here? Well, again, I should just add these two points in and include them. So I hope that that makes sense um, why that's the closure there. Um, let's see, for another example, um, let's do another example, let's try anyway. Uh, let's bring my favorite set back in, one, two, three. And now I gotta make you have a topology and it's really hard to make one that's actually a topology. So how about one and uh, one, two, sounds pretty good. Cool, so then in this case, what is the closure of say, just the singleton three? So what do we see? We see three, that's my A. So I'll say three bar then should be equal to what? So maybe it would be good, why don't we just list the closed sets then? And just to remind you too, remember we just take complements of each of these to talk about the closed sets. So closed sets are, um, in this case, well, empty and X, sure. But then now that would give me the complement of that of one is two, three. Remember complement in here. So two, three, and the complement of this would just be three itself. And so uh, my point then, yeah, what is my point? Do I have a point? I think so. So <laughs> what is the closure of say um, one then? The closure of one, what is that equal to? So what are we trying to do? We're trying to look at, well, what is the smallest closed set that contains one? Well, he doesn't have one, and uh, two, three doesn't have one, and the empty set doesn't have one. So the closure of one in this topological space is the whole set itself. So hope that that illustrates in a little bit more abstract, uh, you know, non-familiar sense, just what a closure is. So. X itself in this example is the smallest closed set that contains one here. On the other hand, you could do another one where like, uh, what would two be? Now I gotta get rid of my orange. Orange, see it orange by orange. So the closure of two, if I look at my closed sets, I see he doesn't contain two, but this one does. So the closure would just be two, three. Sense what we're doing. 
Um, now, what else is going on here? We're gonna break a bar closure into kind of two constituent pieces, kind of two components, if you will. And so to do that, I gotta define for you uh, one more concept here. Let me tell you about what a limit point is. So definition, we say uh, something like, uh, maybe I should give you some more context. So given subset A of X, let's say X and A, we say X, or do I want X to be an A? No, 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 sorry. X is just somewhere in your set. So I'm not trying to say that X is an A. I'm not trying to say that, but we're gonna say X is a limit point of A uh, if the following happens. So if any, any neighborhood, okay, I'm not sure if I've used that word yet in a video. So any neighborhood of uh, X, any neighborhood, and what is a neighborhood here? This is, you know, any, any open set containing X. It's all neighborhood means. I spell containing, that's hard, containing X. So any neighborhood of X should have a point that is a, a point of A that's different from X itself. So any neighborhood of X um, contains a point of A. And we just need to specify this last part, like you know, what if X was already in A? So I, I wanna specify that there's another point of A different than X. So any point contains a point of A different than X, than X itself. And so the set of all limit points, we're gonna use A prime to denote that. Denote set of limit points of A by A prime. And uh, what I wanna to try to do is to give you a picture that uh, tells me about what's going on here. So for example, Let's go back to the real line. That seems familiar. X is the real line, say, the usual topology, so like open intervals and stuff like that. Um, all right, let me think about an example really quick. So how about I go from like uh, A to B, say. That sounds great, that's cool. Okay, so what we want to know then is that this is my set, say, A. So A is equal to open interval from A to B. And uh, maybe I should color that, say. A, open interval, A to B, um, blah, 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 blah. What I wanna know is what's A prime. And so, what is A prime? A prime, we should get, this should be, um, you know, all of the points that are just anywhere on the real line. So that's where I'm saying, I want all the points that are anywhere in your set uh, such that any neighborhood of that point contains a point from my orange. So I wanna think about what are all the points on the real line such that any interval I put around it contains one of the orange points. And so to give you an example, this one way out here, not a limit point, how come? Well, I could put this neighborhood around that purple, um, so yeah, I could put this green neighborhood around this purple point and it doesn't touch the orange. So that's not a limit point. So what does that mean then? Well, maybe I need to look somewhere like uh, um, in here. So what if I took a point that's between A and B? Is that a limit point? Sure, how come? Well, if you put any neighborhood around this point, if you take that one say, you've got other things that are in the orange besides the green itself. Uh, similarly, you could make that bigger if you wanted to, sure, fine. I've still got other things that are in the orange beside the green itself. So what am I trying to get at? These things, the stuff in A, uh, they're all, you know, limit points two. Um, maybe other than, other than, that's different from X, fine. Uh, but then what are the more interesting ones in this example say? What about just this endpoint A here? Now A, this endpoint, is not an element of that since I use parentheses, but think about any window that you put around A or the word I'm using, neighborhood that I put around A, I don't care how small you make it, you're always gonna have some orange with you. And so what am I trying to say? Every neighborhood you put around A is always gonna intersect this thing and it's always gonna contain other points of the orange besides A itself. So uh, 
A is definitely in here. Um, probably shouldn't list these out, but whatever. A, and then by that logic as well, uh, B should be a limit point also because any neighborhood you put around B is also going to intersect the orange. So B should be in there too. And uh, I'll write it that way. And then of course, if we agree to say anything else in A is also a limit point, that's fine too. Uh, sometimes people might distinguish between the two like Yeah, sometimes people might distinguish between the two. It just kind of depends on context. Um, I'm just going to call these two things, um, I'll say union A. Those will be some limit points there. Uh, and so what do I want to get at? So how do you make the closure? For the closure, the closure then, and this is a theorem, closure of A, how do you make it? Well, you should have all the stuff in A, and you should also include any other limit points that are in there uh, as well. And so to give you an example, you know, there's also some stuff that uh, you could have in A that's like not a limit point, uh, and that's kind of interesting too. That might be a cool example. So maybe I'll just draw you this picture. Let's say that I go from, say, A to B, but then I've also got this point C here. And so my set then, is a equals this interval a to b union c in this case so c is an element of a right that's what this says here but then c itself it's not a limit point uh, how come well because it's possible to put a window or a neighborhood around c that uh, doesn't contain anything from a besides c itself so that's why c is not a limit point and so c is not limit point in this case and so some books might say C is an isolated point cool so um, what else do I want to say about that on the other hand what are some other limit points here well by the same logic as before you should get a as a limit point and you should get that uh, B is a limit point also and so uh, by that logic, then, the closure of A should be equal to bracket AB union that singleton C again in my picture. 